Buongiorno, my soccer universe. It actually is my birthday today, and so I decided to go in golden birthday boy. It's also the jersey that will be worn on the picture on Twitter today. Unfortunately, my favorite team, one of my two favorite, Lask actually delivered. Milan, not quite, but they delivered a great game, uh, but I still decided I'll go for them. And we already see, yeah, now it's Inter up there again because of the way the results go. I actually did not see all that much Serie A. I mean, of course, I watched Milan Roma, but did not see all that much except highlights. Uh, I think I saw the Atalanta Sampdoria, but that was kind of overlapped by the Classico, and so yeah. Maybe it will not be as long of a video today. So let's look at the results. It actually started out on Friday and I kicked myself a little bit. Do we use Sassuolo Torino or Villa against Leeds? And I thought Villa against Leeds, that might be the more interesting one. No, not really. Maybe I should have switched over when Villa, uh, uh, when Villa was down already kind of decisively. Because I mean, the first half it was foggy, everything. Torino actually slightly better, Linetti giving them the lead in the 33rd minute and then you know the game plodded along but suddenly the fog lifted uh, I think uh, Torino was still the better team I mean there were many long-range shots um, but Torino was most was a little bit better in the game and played actually more Sassuolo style and you know always watch Sassuolo in, in a way but then Djuricic gets the equalizer after you know back healing it in after a nice uh, assist by Müldür um, and you think, yeah, maybe Sassuolo can get going. No, just Belotti in the 77th uh, and then uh, gets the 2-1 and then he sees Lukic to make it 3-1 in the 79th. You think game over. No, never count out Sassuolo. That's similar to Atalanta in many ways. Uh, and Chiriches with a wonderful long range shot in the 84th uh, makes it 2-3 and a minute later Caputo can equalize and it ends 3-3. Typically Italian result as of late as, you know, in Italy the goals are scored now. They forget about defensive uh, stuff there. I honestly was not unhappy of Sassuolo dropping points because, you know, Milan table whatsoever. But, you know, maybe I would have liked the Torino win there a little bit more. But, you know, then on the other side, Sassuolo is such a fun team to watch that you actually want to see them do well. So it was not really that I was uh, Sassuolo, no. I would just went by a table, but overall I think they're the more fun. They're a really fun team to watch. Uh, that also would apply to Atalanta, but what happened? Ranieri actually found the right tactic and Cagliarella gives them very early on a goal. Uh, and with some luck, it was only 1-0 at the break because Cagliarella, Cagliarella also misses a penalty. Yes, Atalanta had, uh, had some chance in between, but it was not all that uh, convincing. Um, and when Thorsby makes it 2-0 for Sampdoria, you were rightfully saying, yeah, that's actually not that undeserved. Uh, and that's the part then, you know, Zapata coming on, Tolo coming on, Gossens coming on. Yes, Atalanta had to, uh, you know, prepare for the championship because another big uh, clash is come, coming up, but uh, did not seem to work in their favor. Atalanta then gets a penalty that Zapata can convert, uh, tries to press for the equalizer, but not that convincing. And then Yankto in stoppage time makes it 3-1 for uh, some Sampdoria and they get a well-deserved and very much needed victory. Uh, Inter is not tripping up that much, controlling most of the game. January only in the second half comes, but right when you thought, yeah, they have Inter well under control, especially Lukaku, Barella sets up Lukaku, who while falling makes it 1-0. And then after a, Ranoc, uh, after a corner, Ranocchio runs from the uh, goal line out to hit uh, the ball with the, um, the head towards Ambrosio, who can head in the 79th Inter, playing in those wonderful bah, tic tac toe jer jerseys. Uh, get a 2 0 a win, which uh, is what they actually needed because they had not won for a while. Um, so, Inter back on track again. Um, I was considering Lazio Bologna, but the end ended, ended up not watching Cagliari, 4-2 against Crotone, also big result. Uh, Benevento Napoli, the Campania derby, um, with the two Insigne Paras going against it, and of course also Gattuso against Inzaghi. There are a lot of players from that Milan team 
that turn out to be coaches, uh, you know, from a 2000 million, million team, that are co, co coaches, of course. They post it uh, next, next to you. Uh, yeah, great, great to see you. Uh, the younger uh, Insigne brother actually gives Benevento the lead uh, at the half with, you know, some sloppy defending as we saw already get against AZ. And Benevento probably enjoyed a little bit more in the first half. Second half, Insigne has initiated, the other Insigne, the big Insigne, Lorenzo from Napoli, has a goal uh, uh, disallowed. But then, you know, Politano comes on, Petania comes on, Gattuso, you know, we need to win this match. Insigne with a really nice shot that goes from the uh, crossbar in and then bounces out, out again, makes it 1-1. Uh, I thought there was a foul from Olgimen on the goalkeeper there, but, you know, I would have given at least a yellow a yellow card after. And then seven minutes later, Petania gets his first goal after Politano assist. Uh, there was a big chance at the, at the end for Benevento to equalize, but it ends 2-1 for Napoli. Very important win for them. Uh, Parma and Spezia, I think there's a nice interstate because I was driving from Parma to uh, Spezia between those two over the mountains and, and of, of the upper Apennine mountains. Uh, ends in a 2-2 draw, Fiorentina a 3-2 over Udine, but you know they had a 2-0 and 3-1 lead, so maybe not all that exciting. Juve 1-1 won, won only against Verona. Uh, first off, you were playing in those new human race shirts by Adidas that were released last week. And I think they are only one of a few teams that actually will uh, wear those in-match fashion statement. Yes, and they have been doing this last, uh, what was it, two, uh, it was, I think it was last season when they were wearing the, um, uh, those weird Halloween kits. Uh, I don't know with with home uh, I don't recall the name now. Whatever, whatever the most you will look in jerseys last season, uh, Palace. So Adidas is doing it. I pers yes, I get fashion statement maybe, but these jerseys in particular I really don't get. I don't get this whole uh, self tie aesthetic of them. Uh, maybe the Juve jersey is. I mean the Bayern jersey is probably the best one. I I, I would say, but. I, you know, with the crest all washed out and so on. I'm, you know, I don't know in what this human race should, should be. Is this a charity? I mean, when I, I just did the ocean plastic thing, yeah, great. But is this a charity? Uh, then I had to, Ferrer Williams, I had to look up because, you know, hip hop rap is not exactly my stuff. I, I don't. Uh, it doesn't hit me in the right spot or, or whatever, and I don't understand it, and so I didn't understand it either. So for me, it's ra rather weird, but it's you know, nice to see kind of this old Adidas jersey brought back in a way, but yeah. You actually was not that bad. I mean, there was Quadrado hitting the bar uh, where he maybe should have goal, made a goal. Morata scored a wonderful goal, but was just a smidgen of sight. And, you know, so you miss chances, and suddenly Favilli makes it 1-0 for Verona, who just came on three, three minutes before, but then a few minutes later he already needs to come off with an in, in injury. It was really weird. Kulusevski, meanwhile, came on for Bernadeschi, and then he was a thorn in the side of uh, Verona all, all the time, and Morata assisting him, but it was all Kulusevski running through the, uh, the, the Verona defense, getting the equalizer. Then um, uh, doubly deflected, but not that much, but all the slight deflections by Dybala also hits the bar. So Juventus could have well found the winner there, but it's only 1-1 one, one towards the end of that game. And then yesterday evening, a highly entertaining Milan-Roma game. And it was a very weird game. And first of all, Donnarumma was out. He was diagnosed with Coco COVID, so Tatarajano had to play. And I was already afraid and I was saying, yeah, maybe he will shake, shake it a little bit at, at the beginning. No, uh, he never looked safe. But the same thing was uh, when Pepe Reina was uh, substituting. He always needed, needed to have two, three games and maybe that's the same thing. Yeah, I, I understand it's really hard for goalies if you're not playing a lot to come in. So I don't want to chastise him. But he was, I think, one of the main factors that Milan did not get that win. On the other side, Milan had many chances and good chances. However, I think Roma was the better team because they had the right tackles. You could, uh, the um, Calabria and Hernandez were kind of uh, neutralized and they are uh, a team that is really nice to watch. I think uh, Roma, a really uh, great playing team. It's just maybe a little bit more um, hard, 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 h
a little bit more wily you need to be to get, to get a little bit higher but uh, it's a really interesting and good team to watch and i thought that most of the time roma was the more dangerous team uh that had milan under uh, under control and milan was more after that ball situations i mean they get the first goal wonderful layout of ball and Slatan just pull for his pass, the goal, goalkeeper to make it 1 0. I mean, I was, yeah, Slatan again. Uh, but then they couldn't really fall for that because, because they were a little bit, uh, Milan was stifled by Roma. They could not uh, get in their usual play. And then after a corner uh, by Pellegrini, Tatarajano kind of dives under it and Zajeko can uh, head it in the empty net. Then there were chances for, for Milan. I think uh, they hit the post once. Uh, there was a good shot by Cialanoglu. I think Kia also, also had one. Uh, but this was towards the end of the first for, for first half and all after that ball situations. Other than that, I think Roma had more chances. Um, two minutes into the second half, Milan score again. Salemakers again. Leao turns on the afterburners, gets past uh, his man can pull it back, Salamakas can pull it in. Uh, and then I really thought that, yes, Roma was coming, but I thought that Milan had the ga game un un under control, but the only one who did not have anything under control was the ref referee, because the penalty he gave in the 70th minute was ridiculous. Tatarjano, yes, he is not, he should hold hold on the ball. He is clearing it forward, but then there's Ben Acer, who clearly gets the ball ahead of Dzeko, but the referee gives a foul and Roma wasn't even claiming a foul. Of course, Milan completely upset. I mean, uh, Slatan already claimed two or three handballs and I think it was all right to not have them given in the box. But yeah, um, I think there was one where it could, it could have been given, but then Slatan was offside. So yeah, there are two steps up, it is 2-2. And then again, Milan really trying to get a penalty. And Ten minutes later, they get and it was also a concession because uh, the way John Nogel was brought down, he feared best. Uh, so yeah, Slatan steps out, 7-9, make it 3-2. I really was hoping they uh, hang on, but the game was kind of ugly. I mean, Hernandez should have been sent off uh, for, for, for Teki after a corner, Kumbula then makes it 3-3. Milan actually had chances to find the winner, but it was not meant to be. It's the first time they dropped points, but I have to say it was a very entertaining game. Uh, it was a good game to watch. I, I really think you could see both teams are um, among the better in this CSCR season. Can they both push for top four? We have to see. Um, I actually... I have to. I have to say, if Milan can stay uh, in a way healthy, I see Milan a little bit more. Although Roma has really good things going for them as well. So let's look at, at the standings. Where yeah, it's chance missed for Milan. You could have gone four clear. Now you're only two clear as last uh, weekend. You know, Napoli having a point deducted, which might go back. So I actually think that Napoli or. Of the three Europa League teams, I actually think that Na Na Napoli is the most complete one and the one that really could challenge. But uh, due to Milan dropping points and Inter winning, Inter is now again uh, the favorite in the championship ahead of Milan and Napoli. Juve barely uh, hanging in there still and I would not count kind of Atalanta suddenly dropping. Uh, Atalanta having two losses in, in a row and just, yeah. I think this with the Champions League, maybe they're going now more for a Champions League than for uh, Serie A and try to roll it up uh, later. Roma again uh, probably should have more uh, points. If we look at the bottom, uh, Torino is a team that I feel should not be there. Bologna also not necessarily sh uh, should be there. And Lazio also only getting slowly uh, going there. Fiorentina also. There, there's a big midfield. But the most important thing is Italy is again, the Serie A is among the top five again, the most high, the highest scoring league uh, with over 3.6 goals. And that is taking out the goals awarded to Juventus and Verona. So many, many goals scored. And if you just see the bars are filling up, uh, Atalanta still the team, I think, with the most goals per game uh, to watch. So watch Atalanta. If in doubt. Next round, uh, we don't have anything big. I mean, Inter Parma is usually a trap game for Inter, but I'm not sure this time, time around. Roma Fiorentina, uh, that's a traditional clash. 
Uh, Milan has to play a game away to Udinese is also also a game I really do not like, but I guess they should win that. And Juve is playing at Spezia, so there's not really this big standout game. Maybe Napoli Sassuolo. I think that would be the one to watch. Atalanta plays at Crotone. Um, anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below what you thought about the games, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!